that I just said. Um, um, just um, raise your hand, except um, Linda is listening. I don't have a, uh, I can't see um, her hand. So Linda, you would need to uh, unmute and uh, let us know what the clarification is. So the intent of my spending this time with you this evening is to give you sort of a broad beginning explanation of what Medicare is, what it does, and how it works. Um, I, even though I would consider myself an expert with regard to case management and discharge planning, I am not exclusively a Medicare um, expert or advisor. But I'm also a new Medicare recipient, and I've had many of the same questions, the concerns, worries, and things that you didn't know um, that you might very well have right now. So let's begin our journey and foray into this mystical uh, world of Medicare. It's really not something that's terribly secretive, but there are a lot of pieces and parts. And that's where it can get confusing. Medicare started um, originally, um, oh gosh, I should have looked the history up. I think it was during the Truman administration, um, but uh, don't hold me to that. My uh, US history is not as buff as I'd like it to be. And there were two basic components to the original Medicare plan that exists today, um, known as Part A and Part B. I want to point out a differentiation to you that may seem very uh, picky, but it's important. And it has to do with the words um, part and the words word plan. For instance, when you talk about Part C, which I'll mention in a minute, it's not the same as Plan C. They're two entirely different things. So as a Medicare consumer, us, we need to be clear with our terminology, particularly if you're talking with somebody from Medicare or Social Security. So the first original part uh, of Medicare is Part A. And Part A is the part of original Medicare that pays for your being in the hospital. It pays your room, uh, it pays your board, um, and that's basically it. It also will pay, for instance, if you have to have a joint replacement and you're not able to go directly home after that hospitalization, but you need to have some form of rehab after that joint replacement, Medicare will pay for that rehab uh, up to a total of 90 days. And I'm not going to get into the um, specifics of, there's a certain period of time that Medicare pays all of it. Um, uh, then there's a, a period of time when a supplement pays for it. We're, I'm not going to get into that. Let's just say Medicare Part A pays for your rehab after you have a joint replacement, up to 90 days. If you are approaching the end of your life and you choose to be home uh, under hospice care or in a hospice house, Medicare Part A pays for that service. Medicare pays for what they define as 80% of medically necessary cha uh, charges. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, a little bit more deeply when uh, I talk to you about uh, Medicare supplements. Part B of original uh, Medicare, you can think of more as outpatient, um, if you have to have an MRI, a CAT scan, lab work, Medicare Part B is the part of your Medicare that pays for that. It also pays for any doctor's visits that you have. And while you are a patient in the hospital, 
it pays the, the fees for the physicians who take care of you and visit um, you while you're in the hospital and who consult um, on your care while you're there. Part B also takes care of what we call DME, durable medical equipment, wheelchairs, walkers, uh, home oxygen, that sort of thing, hospital beds, and also preventive services like screenings, shots, vaccines, and annual wellness visits. There are two newer parts to original Medicare. Um, Part um, D and Part C, and I'm going to talk about those individually. Fortunately, Part D um, refers to drug coverage. So when you think Part D, you think drugs. Um, and um, Part um, Part C, I will talk about separately in a moment. And these are uh, the Medicare Advantage um, plans, which uh, you're seeing uh, every time you try to watch a TV program, you're being wooed and awed by these companies to join um, their, uh, their plan. Um, as I mentioned before, Original Medicare pays 80% of all charges, whether you're in the hospital or you're an outpatient. And then you might say to yourself, okay, so if Medicare pays 80%, what happens to the other 20%? And that 20% that Medicare does not cover falls back on us. We are responsible for that 20% unless we choose to have a Medicare supplement insurance or a Medigap policy. And these Medigap or supplemental insurances pay the other 20% of the fees not covered by Medicare A and B. And the Medigap or the supplemental insurances are the ones who use the term plans rather than parts. So to regroup, original Medicare, parts A and B were original, D for drugs came along later, and the newest one is part C, which are your Medicare Advantage plans. You either have original Medicare or you have a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you don't have both. Although in order to get a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to enroll to begin with in um, parts um, A and B. And then the, when the um, Medicare Advantage plan kicks in, you decide to subscribe to it. Original Medicare goes into the background and stays dormant while Medicare Advantage picks up the ball and rolls with it for you, for you in terms of paying your expenses. Medicare um, Advantage plans, um, you are comp comprised of part A, part B, and usually, some exceptions not, but usually part D. And they don't refer to those individual parts. They're just a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, Medicare, original Medicare is administered by our federal government. When um, these Medicare Advantage plans came about, um, they've come about under the direction and under the ruling of, um, of the Medicare system. Uh, so the, the rules and regulations for these Advantage plans um, were set up by um, Medicare originally. Um, 
So who provides these Medicare Advantage plans? They are certain um, private companies, some of them you've heard of before. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, for instance, has a Medicare Advantage plan. A Harvard Pilgrim has a Medicare Advantage plan. If you're an AARP member, United Healthcare has um, a Medicare Advantage plan. And there are pros and cons for both. There's not a perfect solution um, for this. And I want to caution you as you think about your own coverage and what route you wish to take, you might hear a friend or relative say, well, I've got this plan or I prefer this plan. It's all well and good. It's not wrong to listen to what they have to say, but you need to remember your health care needs, your health care status, the condition of your human body, um, any chronic illnesses you might have are specific to you. And these other people that you talk with may or may not have these same illnesses and their body may or may not be like yours. So don't necessarily choose something just because someone else has it. Make the choice because it's the right one for you. And I'll take a sip periodically because when you're this full of hot air, you dry yourself out uh, pretty quickly. And you were supposed to chuckle at that one. Um, so, um, how does Medicare work? Well, I've sort of re referred to it already. With regard to um, original Medicare, if you um, are hospitalized, the hospital and the, um, the physicians that take care of you in the hospital um, send separate bills to original Medicare. And original Medicare will look at the charges that are submitted, and they will determine whether or not those are charges that are covered by Medicare. Um, and in, in most cases, charges that are submitted um, are covered. There are instances where that's not the case, but generally speaking, Medicare will let the hospital know um, if some component of care is um, not going to be uh, covered or paid for by them. And then the decision gets made with the patient whether or not they should um, proceed with whatever the procedure or the test is that um, they want to perform. If you have um, a Medigap or supplemental insurance, once Medicare has looked at those charges and said, we approve them and we're going to pay 80% of them, the hospital then bills your Medigap or supplemental insurance for the other 20%. And if Medicare accepts it, your Medigap policy by law has to accept it. So if Medicare accepts it, your Medigap policy cannot reject it. They must pay that 20% of the um, total charges that Medicare has um, approved. Um, with Medicare Advantage plans, all bills are submitted to that um, Advantage plan. So say, for instance, you happen to have um, um, Medicare Advantage through United Healthcare. All of the bills are sent to United Healthcare and handled um, uh, by that company exclusively. Um, differences between original Medicare um, and Advantage plans. Uh, the first, the first one has to do with doctor and hospital choice. 
With original Medicare, I would say at least for us in New Hampshire, I'm not aware of any private hospitals, private medical hospitals in the state of New Hampshire. And to the best of my knowledge, all of the hospitals in the state of New Hampshire and in the state of Vermont um, all participate with Medicare, which means if Medicare says for this particular procedure, this particular test, this is what we pay, um, the hospital will charge what Medicare says to charge. So for instance, um, let's take uh, an example here. And this is, I'm just pulling out of the, the air. This is not a, a real life example. But say for instance, there's um, some sort of um, x-ray scan that you're going to, that you need to have. And the hospital normally would charge $1,200 or $1,400 for that scan. Um, Medicare might say to the hospital, well, you might charge $1,400, but Medicare only, only recognizes $1,000 of that $1,400. If the hospital participates with Medicare, the patient cannot be charged for that amount of money, those charges in excess of what Medicare approves. So in this instance, um, the patient would have the test and Medicare would be billed for the $1,000. And of that $1,000, um, Medicare would pay 80% of those charges, which in this case would be $800. If you the individual has a Medigap um, policy or a supplemental policy, that policy would pay the remaining $200. Otherwise you would, if you did not, if you had just part A and part B and no supplement, you would be billed for the remaining $200 of that total $1,000 charge. Um, if the Medicare Advantage plans um, can set their own um, uh, ex their own acceptable charge. Um, original Medicare might say one thousand, but United Healthcare might say we only pay um, nine hundred and fifty, and that is what the the hospital um, would accept if they are contracted with that particular insurance plan. So if you're, if you're going to stay with original Medicare and the hospital near you where you like to go participates with Medicare, there's no problem. However, if you choose a Medicare Advantage plan and the hospital that you like to go to does not participate with that insurance company or that Medicare Advantage plan, you won't be able to go to your own hospital. You'll have to go to the nearest hospital that participates with that plan. And I can give you an actual real life example. Um, when the job I was doing at the time that I retired um, involved um, helping patients transition from the hospital to um, uh, local skilled nursing facilities for rehab. And I do know that at the time I retired in March, for instance, Country Village um, uh, in Lancaster was not contracted with United Healthcare. So if a patient had United Healthcare Medicare Advantage, they would not be able to go to, to Country Village unless they paid out of pocket. Um, and that is only one example. There are many examples like that. So you need to be very, um, you need to be very sure, and I'll talk about this in a minute, 
about um, how you would like to structure your, your health care with regard to whether or not you have a choice and you choose your doctor and hospital or you're willing to have that be dictated um, by the insurance company. So that's one difference between a Medicare Advantage plan and original Medicare, doctor and hospital choice. Another choice is cost. Um, generally speaking, your upfront premiums can often be less expensive than if you have part A, part B, and a Medicare supplement. On a monthly basis, your premiums might be higher if you choose to stick with original Medicare and a Medigap policy. However, and I caution you to think about this if you're comparing the two and you're leaning toward one or the other, Remember that Medicare Advantage plans generally do have co-pays or co-insurance fees as well as deductibles. And you need to, to weigh those costs of that particular Medicare Advantage plan with Original Medicare. Original Medicare B does have a deductible, an annual deductible, and that is based upon um, your um, how much Social Security you make and what your last years of earnings were before you retired. Um, but once that deductible is met, if you have um, a Medigap policy, generally speaking, um, your uh, fees are paid at 100%. Um, coverage is also something you need to consider. Um, there are some, if, if you are paying attention to the commercials now for Humana, it, for instance, is one of the um, people that are out there advertising on TV right now. And the lady's talking about, oh, well, when she went uh, home with her hip replacement, they paid for her food in the refrigerator and paid for this and paid for that. Um, that might very well be and could be in a more urban area, but I will tell you that a lot of the things that they talk about in the commercials, well, it paid for transportation for me to go to the doctor, and it paid for my eyeglasses, and it paid for my hearing aids, and it paid for me to see the doctor for the hearing aids. Um, that may very well be, but what they don't tell you is that here in New Hampshire, and specifically in the North Country, there are very few, if any, doctors, um, specialists like um, uh, eye doctors, um, optometrists, um, ear doctors, there are very few of those that work with Medicare patients. That's the piece that they don't tell you. So when you're listening to these commercials on TV and you think, gee, this sounds like a really great deal. Why doesn't everybody sign up? Listen very, very carefully for words like may cover, possibly cover, could cover. These are all words that have a strong tentative suggestion. And at that point, lights should be flashing and buzzers should be going off. Because while that might be in the lower part of the state in the cities or possibly some other New England states, it does not necessarily refer to us living up here in the North Country. Um, another piece that's different between original Medicare and uh, Medicare Advantage plans, um, original Medicare will not cover you outside of the U.S., including going to Canada. It will not cover you. 
if you wish to travel having original Medicare, you need to purchase some type of travel health insurance in order to have coverage out of the United States. Um, however, there are quite a number of the Medicare Advantage plans that do cover um, for health expenses outside of the US, but not necessarily at 100%, in some cases 80%, in some cases 50%, and possibly e even less. So if you decide to send sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, and you want to be able to have foreign coverage, I would suggest that you check with that plan before you sign on the dotted line so you know what your responsibility will be should you decide to travel and need health care while you're um, away from home. So that all being said, you might say to me, well, this is all great, Peter. You've just given me this lap full and boatload of information. Now, what do I do with it? How do I make the decision as to what is best for me? And I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it is a very difficult decision to make. Um, you wouldn't necessarily know this, but by nature, I'm a very anxious individual. So when it came time for me to sign up for all of this stuff, um, new uh, last year when I turned 65, um, I was a wreck. Um, and if you look at my paperwork, I save almost everything. And I've saved all of the worksheets and paperwork that I used to sign up for what I eventually settled on. I was telling uh, Nancy before we got started, I've got food stains all over it. Um, I don't know if it's brown gravy or or, or uh, fruit juice stain, but um, everything is peppered with it. So I understand the angst and the, oh God, how do I sort through all of this? There's different ways of doing it. And the first thing is to read. There are two resources that I am going to share with you um, um, at the end of the presentation again, but I'll mention them to you now. Um, and let me um, stop for a moment and pause and say, if you have not yet done so, I would encourage you to set up, if you're a computer person, um, I would encourage you to set up or create an online account with both Medicare and the Social Security Administration. Uh, I actually set up my account with Social Security, oh good Lord, probably 15 or 20 years ago. Um, when I first joined um, a retirement plan, uh, because I needed to to um, figure out how much money I was going to put in the re retirement plan. And the only way I could figure that out was if I knew or had a ballpark figure as to how much I might be getting when I um, started to draw Social Security. So if you go online to SSA, which stands for Social Security, Ad Security Administration, SSA.gov, it will be self-explanatory and they, it will, the website will direct you through how to set up uh, an account with the Social Security Administration. And I'd highly recommend that you do that. The other important one that, you'd, that you would find helpful is Medicare. Gov, M E D I R C A R E dot G O V. And under Medicare.gov, you can actually obtain a copy of the Medicare handbook. And it's produced every year and it is published about this time. So my husband just got his uh, hard copy um, a few days ago. I got notice via my email that the electronic version was available to me last week. This is a very helpful booklet. 
um, you can sign up for it. You can receive it now if you don't have one. And I would start from the very beginning. Um, there's an index in the front, and I would just read it. It has all of the information that I've shared with you so far. So you don't have to remember, oh, God, what was it that he said about this and this? It's within this booklet. Okay, this is invaluable. And um, whether you get a hard copy or you settle for one that's um, online really depends upon your personal nature. Quite frankly, I've, I have a hard time to read computer screens, even though I'm computer savvy. Reading this on a computer screen is, is not easy for me. I do better with a paper copy in front of me. But since um, one of us already gets a paper co a copy, I'm going to save trees and get mine electronically and uh, just look at my husband's. But have, having this paper copy and being able to flip back and forth is really um, very useful. And it will answer probably a good share of the questions you might have. The other um, document that I'm going to recommend to you is also available online. And it is called New Hampshire's Guide to Medicare Supplement Insurance. And um, currently, the uh, 22 version um, is the only one out. The 23 version is probably going to be out closer to October 1. So it should be soon. This is a very useful document if you decide you want to stick with original Medicare. Um, parts A and B, but you want to know more about buying a supplemental policy that will pay that 20%, this is the booklet you want to have. Um, you can download it on your computer. You can also request and receive a paper copy of it. Um, it's written, both of these documents are written, I would say, at a high school level. You do not need a college degree to understand them. Um, and it talks about um, Medigap um, or supplemental benefits, you know, regarding which plan. Remember I told you the difference between parts and plans? Parts have to do with... Um, the different sections of Medicare plans have to do with Medigap policies. So these are two um, resources that um, I, I will mention again uh, at the end of our discussion. Let's go back to how do you make the decision or what should the deciding factor be? I would say in the largest um, percentage of most of us, the deciding factor is economics and money. I won't lie to you, sticking with um, original Medicare, um, uh, having Medicare um, Part B and having a supplement is not inexpensive. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the actual price tags in just a moment. Um, but economics is going to be the, the driving force here for you. Um, you may find that, geez, I can't really afford, um, you know, um, four or five hundred dollars a month. Um, to pay for uh, a high level Medigap policy um, and part B um, and part A if you don't qualify to get it free, which most of us do qualify for that. Um, and it may very well be that then um, for matter of economics and in order to have healthcare, you need to go with a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, that may be how you end up deciding, which is why you want the two booklets that I've just 
uh, mentioned to you. At the back of the Medicare handbook, the Medicare and you handbook, let me see if I, uh, hang on just one minute for me. At the very back of it, if you were opening this, see why it's sometimes easier to have a paper copy? Um, it talks about, what page was that? Okay, I know I didn't dream this. Talks about Medicare, Medigap. No, just a minute. I was just, this may not be. It's 127B. I may not have gone far enough. I didn't go far enough. No, it's not in here. When you receive the, um, the here's the difference between um, the paper copy of the Medicare versus the online. At the back of the paper copy, they, there are two um, um, extra documents. One talks about Medicare prescription drug plans in New Hampshire, and another one talks about Medicare um advantage plans that are licensed to do business um in new hampshire that information you can also find at um the medicare.gov website this um if you decide to uh get a medicare supplement this document also tells you what companies are licensed to um, supply um, Medigap policies in the state of New Hampshire, starting with Exendo all the way down to USS, uh, USAA Life. This document also gives you um, a preview uh, potentially of what the monthly uh, premiums might be. Um, plan A, um, as opposed to part A, um, uh, I'm going to confuse myself here. There, um, of these Medigap plans, um, Uh, for instance, um, some of these plans you'll notice um, offer a plan G, a plan N. And if you want to know what a plan G and a plan N is, it tells you here that um, plan N um, serves as a coinsurance and pays for hospital costs. Uh, after Medicare benefits are used up, it pays as your coinsurance or copayment for Part B. It pays for blood if you need transfusion. Um, helps pay for uh, hospice care. Um, pays for your Part A and your Part B deductibles. Uh, and so on. It will also tell, take you to the various insurance companies. It'll show you which company covers which type of Medigap plan and what the monthly premium will be. Um, originally, if you were born or you signed up for Medicare before, if you turned six, uh, 65 before 2000, 
um, 22, you could sign up for um, a plan F, which was like a Cadillac plan. But if you're like me, and you turn 65 after that time, it's no longer available to you. Plan G is the closest. The difference between, between these two is that plan F used to pay for your um, uh, Part B uh, deductible, but plan G does not. Uh, part B, I will talk about again in just a moment, but I just wanted to refer to these um, for a sec. And I realize this is confusing as I'll get up. Um, so that is your decision making, um, your, your pivotal part of uh, decision making is um, uh, finance. So you want to read. And if you you can certainly talk with an insurance agent from one of the companies that does Medicare Advantage, but don't agree to anything on the phone and don't sign anything until you're absolutely sure that um, that's what you want to do. Um, I'm a little mistrusting of Medicare Advantage plans because of how they do their advertising on TV. Uh, I mentioned before wordings like could, possibly, might, may. Um, listen to that for that carefully because that tells you that there's also a possibility that it might not, may not, um, or would not cover. The other thing is you will never receive a telephone call from um, original Medicare to sign up for their services. If you receive a phone call um, telling you that they are a Medicare company, then very likely it's um, a Medicare Advantage plan. And you should don't agree to anything because um, they can accept verbal agreement over the phone to sign you up. Make sure that you do your enrollment um, with a phone call that you initiate or online if you're a computer person. So signing up for Medicare, if you are um, doing this for the first time this year, having turned um, 65, or if you're going to turn um, 65 before um, next fall, um, know that the um, initial enrollment period starts three months before the month that you turn 65. It includes the month that you turn 65 and three months afterward. So I'm a December birthday. I turned 65 last December. I was able to enroll for Medicare um, starting September 1 of last year. And I, in fact, did do the, uh, I had got, already gotten my Medicare log on for the website. And um, I did do the enrollment. I already knew that I wanted to stick with original Medicare. Um, because of experiences that I had with my work, I did not feel that a Medicare Advantage plan would work best for me. Um, and so um, I got my part A um starting in october uh because i enrolled in september uh, so in october 1st i received my medicare um part a card and i part a only um It has changed a little bit now. Um, 
if you enroll three months before your 65th birthday now in 2022, your coverage will start the first day of your birthday month. But if you enroll the month that you turn 65 or within the three months afterward, your coverage will start the first day of the month after you sign up. So if you're turning um, 65 in October and you sign up for, or you enroll for Part A on October 2nd, your Part A Medicare will, will start as of November 1st. Um, generally speaking, generally speaking, if you are retired, and you are going to do original Medicare, you're going to want to sign up for Part B at the same time that you sign up for Part A. Don't wait. Sign up for them at the same time. If you are, if, if you're not covered by some other insurance plan, um, and you don't sign up for Part B during the enrollment period, and you try to sign up later, you will end up with a penalty. And it's 10% for of, of the total um, monthly premium tacked on to the cost of the monthly premium um, for the first 12 months. And um, beyond the first 12 months, you, there's an additional penalty of another 10%. And you pay that penalty the rest of your life. So if you're not covered by another plan, you're going to go with original Medicare, get your Part A and your Part B at the same time. My situation was a little bit different. I became eligible for Medicare, but I wanted to work full time and not draw Social Security until later. I postponed it. And so I was able to postpone. I got Part A. And I stayed on my employer's group insurance. But when I made the decision to retire and I knew that um, March 4th was going to be my retirement day. Um, in February, on February 4th, I signed up for Part B. Um, and because I signed up within a special enrollment period, because I was retiring, I did not have to pay the penalty. But I also didn't have to pay um, a couple of months premium for um, uh, Part B that I otherwise would have paid if I had gotten it when I first signed up for Part A. Um, special enrollment, uh, okay. And then once you have enrolled in Medicare, every year about this time, um, you will um, either get your Medicare handbook in the mail if you um, uh, decided to uh, get a paper copy, or you'll get an email notice that the new handbook is available so that you can log in and download it. Um, and that will happen um, every fall. And on the 1st of October, you're going to want to reconsider do I want to stick with what I did last year or do I want to change? And if you want to make a change, this is the time that you do it. Um, it may mean that you read the two booklets that I showed you earlier that I will show you again at the end of the presentation, the Medicare handbook and the Med Medigap handbook for New Hampshire. It may be that you'll want to read them both again before you make your final decision, or perhaps something has changed in your financial status and you don't feel that you can afford, if you were on original Medicare um, 
uh, the year before, you may feel that you can no longer afford it and that you need to go with an advantage plan. <clears throat> this is the time when you want to stop sh start shopping with Medicare Advantage plans for the one that offers you the greatest amount of benefit for the least amount of um, monthly premium. So you have from October 15th through December 7th to join, switch, or drop um, your Medicare plan if you're not a new enrollee. There is a grace period. If you sign up for something during this renewal period, and say, for instance, you get to the 1st of February or the end of February, and you say, oh, God, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done this. I should have stayed with what I had. You, If you act before March 31st, you can go back to the coverage that you had before. It's not easy. Um, you have to go through the process. And for that, I probably would suggest that you call um, Social Security and talk with a Medicare advisor there <clears throat> to um, help you make that switch or a service link Medicare um, representative. And I'll be talking about that um, as well in, at the end of the presentation. But you can make that kind of a change only once during the grace period. You cannot keep flip-flopping back and forth. So it's really good if you do your homework now and make a wise, informed decision. Cost. If you have paid Medicare taxes or paid into the system during your work life, generally speaking, your Part A will be free to you. People who have been self-employed all their lives, homemakers who were never employed, never worked outside the home, never paid um, into the system, would probably have to pay um, for their Part A. And the cost, the monthly premium for Part A can be anywhere from $274 uh, dollars a month to $499 dollars a month, depending on what your earnings were uh, via the IRS. But for the vast majority of us, Part A is free. Part A is your hospital benefit. The um, standard um, um, premium a month for Part B in 2022 was $170.20. I will tell you that if you draw Social Security, and you you decide to and you enroll in Part uh, Part B your Part B premium will automatically be deducted uh, from your Social Security check. If you decide to um, get a Medicare um, Advantage plan or um, a Medigap policy and or a Part D, a drug plan, those monthly premiums can also be deducted by, from your monthly so Social Security check if you want them to, but you have to sign up for that. Um, it won't automatically happen. Part B is the only one uh, that automatically happens. And again, I strongly ad encourage and advise you to sign up for Part B at the time you, you enroll for Part A. Mine was a slightly different situation because I knew what was coming. I had it planned out. And trust me, I watched the calendar like a hawk to make sure that I didn't end up defaulting on uh, Part B and that I would be stuck with that penalty. Um, that's pretty stiff. Um, an added $17 or $34 a month for the rest of your life that you don't need to pay. And that, ten, that percentage goes up as the cost of plan uh, Part B goes up, um, you know, as time goes on. 
Um, we're still waiting to hear whether or not the cost for Part B is going to go up for the year 2023, which begins um, January 1st. Medicare operates on the calendar year. So we don't know if it's going to stay at 170 uh, and 20 cents or if it's going to, to go up. We don't know that. But the Medicare.gov website will have that information as soon as, as it's available. So another good reason to have a Medicare account online. Um, resources. I already mentioned Medicare.gov and I mentioned Social Security Administration.gov. Do sign up and get create an account for both of these. You can monitor your social security statements, particularly if you are pre-retirement and you want to have an idea as to what your monthly income will be from social security. You can monitor it um, via this um, this link and logging on. Medicare.gov is where you can uh, get um, the Medicare handbook and any um, updates. Um, if you wish to purchase a plan D for drugs and you go to the Medicare.gov website, <clears throat> there is the ability for you to um, create a medication list um, on this website. And that Medicare, that medication web list can help you shop for a Part D drug plan. Um, what it does is it will show you once you put in all of your drugs, if there are Part D plans that don't cover some of your drugs, the plan won't come up. It won't be visible to you. Or it will say within the description of the plan, you're on um, XYZ drug, we don't cover that. So that you would know upfront that if you chose that plan, it, you would still you would have to pay out of pocket for um, that particular drug. Um, I will tell you that Service Link of New Hampshire um, does have um, people um, at their offices who are Medicare um, advisees, if you were, or Medicare counselors. That number is 866-634-9412. And I should have put that in here. Let me see if it'll let me type it in. Yeah. Now, they may ask you which uh, county they're uh, calling you from, and uh, they may reroute your call to um, a specific um, county. The uh, service link for Coas County is the office is in Berlin. Um, in for Littleton, which is Grafton County. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Sullivan County, it's down in Claremont. And I don't know, uh, don't know about other counties in the state. But anyway, this is the toll free number to call. Another thing that you might want to consider is um, as, uh, calling your local senior center and ask to speak with the director of the center. He or she may be able to tell you if, they're, if they have um, people who volunteer their time doing this sort of thing um, at a senior center. <clears throat> I will caution you, however, some senior citizens, some senior centers will use representatives from the Medicare Advantage co companies. So when you, if you decide to seek help through a senior center and you meet with somebody in person at the senior center, be very sure that you ask them, 
Um, which insurance company do you work for? Um, rather, don't ask, do you work for an insurance company? It's which company do you work for? In which case, they will have to disclose to you um, that, in fact, they do work for one of the insurers. Most of them are ethical, and they won't try to sell you something that you don't want, but don't, I also wouldn't leave it up to chance. Um, if you're a first-time enrollee, um, call uh, Social Security. Um, I do not have that number in front of me. I have, or do I? Uh, I will give you the number for the Littleton Social Security office. I can even spell this evening. That's great. We're off to a good start. 877 405 7658. So if you're a new enrollee, you can also call and make an appointment with them to speak. I think they're still doing it by phone. I don't think they're doing face-to-face -face still because of COVID. Um, <clears throat> and they will go uh, over that um, with you. I will tell you that I utilized that last year and I found it just as helpful to read the information myself. The person that I happened to speak to was not as well-versed as um, I wished he had been. So that's kind of it for a broad overview. And I know that I've thrown a lot of information um, at you, um, but the um, two documents again that I showed you, the Medicare handbook and the Medigap, um, New Hampshire's Guide to Medicare Supplement Insurance are two, it will be um, two tools that you'll find invaluable. So um, let's see. I, Marsha, Lucille, I can see you. I can't see Vicki. I can't see Linda or Kelsey. Um, but Nancy, do you want to go ahead and um, un, um, unmute them? Oh, I need to unmute myself. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody. Yeah. Oh. There. There. Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, Linda, um, do you have any questions? My questions will be in part D that we didn't get to. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and ask. Part D, as in David, is the, um, uh, the drug plan. That is something that um, that's that is um, really highly individualized to the medications that you happen to be taking yourself. Okay. There are a number of um, drug plans uh, uh, out there. Let me read off some of the companies that do. Drug plans for New Hampshire include Aetna, Anthem, Cigna, uh, Clear Spring Health, Elixir Insurance, Humana, Mutual of Omaha, United Healthcare, WellCare. Um, which happens to be the one that I use. Uh, but that is because of... Um, 
the drugs that um, I happen to take. Uh, I'm it's trust me, it's not a badge of courage, but I take a boatload of medication. And so what I did was go to the Medicare.gov website and <clears throat> I clicked on um, um, there's a it, it's it's self-explanatory once you log on but there's a place that that says create my med list and that's where you plug in all of the prescription medications well, that you're taking med list. yep so you'll you'll enter you probably will want your pin, pill bottles um in front of you so, so that you can um uh, enter your dosages, uh, that sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. And once you have add, put all of your medications onto that list, there's, um, it, the, I, I can't remember exactly where on the website, it you, you run your med list with Medicare and it will pull up for you various, um, medication plans that cover the meds that you take. Um, I had a hard time um, deciding which part D to sign up for. And I actually utilized a service link person for that. Um, and he was very helpful. So um, service link could be of help to you, further help to you in terms of making a decision as to um, which um, insurance company and which plan with that insurance company you might want to use. Um, and I'm seeing... Um, yeah, I'm I, with Lucille. It's to yep. be It's... The problem we have had is when Medicare D plans change their formularies oh. and they don't want you to see the formulary for the coming year until you've signed up for the plan. And uh, we ran into a serious planning uh, problem. We did have to change a plan last year. And, you know, it's just scary because, you know, you cannot get both the tier reduction and uh, a formulary exception on the same med. We learn that the hard way. If it is not on your formulary, you can petition to get it, but then it, you only can get it at that highest level. You can't get the tier reduction, which we've been having to do for a med. But it's, uh, I'm hoping that this year, once we've changed now, that we are going to be able to see if indeed this coming year, the plan will still have the medication on its formulary. But you saw the, that on the Medicare website where you spoke of plugging in your meds, yes. I'm hoping that they that allow you to plug it in for the coming year, not just for 22. We're interested in 23. Yes. Uh, now going forward, um, as of October 1st, Yeah. Um, everything will refer to the next plan year. I hope so. Yeah, because that we had a real problem with sense. that. Yeah, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, you won't be able to see anything until October 1st. October 1st. Yeah, and we may need that. Yeah, okay. And then we can, because then if it's on the formulary, we can apply for tier reduction of a med. It's tricky, but it's something very few people know about and is really important. Um, reduction. What Mary is referring to, and this is where it may be very helpful for you to uh, consult with a service link person, is <clears throat> different insurance companies buy drugs from different pharmaceutical companies. And as a result of that, um, what uh, I'm going to pull one out of the hat, um, omeprazole for um, 
uh, to suppress stomach acid formation. So if you're somebody who has a tendency toward um, acid stomach or uh, peptic ulcer disease, you might be on omeprazole. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Aetna may very well buy its um, omeprazole from a different company than Humana, and they may actually get a better deal um, on omeprazole than Humana. So they can pass the savings or the cost on to you, and that's where the tier system comes in. So omeprazole could be a tier one drug for Aetna. It could be a tier drug, two, tier two drug for Humana. Um, but it all has to do with what the final charge is and what, if any, um, out-of-pocket expense um, you might pay. I will also tell you when it comes to Part D, um, something that um, pleasant that I found out was that <clears throat> in spite of the fact that I have a laundry list of medications, that there are several that I actually get for free. Um, I get my drugs filled at Osco Pharmacy, and that combined with um, their purchasing, um, there are actually some things I don't pay anything for, whereas there are some drugs that I do have to um, pay a copay for and some of them a fairly stiff copay so it all depends what other questions can i try to um answer for folks marcia how about you are you thoroughly confused i am totally confused <laughs> well god god bless you you you'll be happy to know that you are a normal average american Absolutely. I, I uh, mean, I know, I know I need the A and B. That okay. much I know. Um, I'm pretty sure that I think I should get a prescription plan of some sort, but I think I'll go on that website and put in my prescriptions and see what it says. Yep. Yeah. And then as far as a supplemental, I don't know. I guess I got to shop around. <laughs> you, you do. Um, I will tell you the um, at the back of this New Hampshire's guide to supplement insurance as you go through. Okay, each of these pages represents a different company. So for instance, if I was buying Exendo this year, as a gentleman, I'd be paying $227.91 a month if I was going to get a plan G through them. But right. say I look at plan G with um, Aetna. Plan G with Aetna is $181.93 rather than $227.91. So then, are you are you are you comparing apples to apples? I mean, are they covering the same thing? Medicare will tell you what the bare bones is, uh, need, is that needs to be covered under these different plans with letters. Different companies can add benefits, but they yeah. must all they must all offer the, the 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 basic of what medicare um um says they have to offer so when i was looking at this last year i went with the cheapest price tag nobody could tell me why united healthcare was uh, going to charge me $457, whereas, um, God, who is it that I have for my, I don't even remember who, <laughs> that's uh, embarrassing, who I have for my, but whoever I chose was under $200. So it was more than twice the cost for me to, to go with United Healthcare than to go with, um, well care. Well care, yes. 
See, United Healthcare seems to be what most people have. I mean, I've kind of talked to a few people. And most everybody has that. I mean, I don't know. They're I'm the most. Sure what. Well, because they're the most heavily advertised. Number one, number. Uh, <clears throat> When you stop to think, they are the ones who are connected with AARP. Right. And yeah. every every time you uh, hear an AARP commercial, they reference United Healthcare. Yeah. Um, oh yes, yeah. because it was still on the formula. Uh, yeah. Say for um, um, on television, United Healthcare hasn't, they go year round. They're always um, advertising. Yes. Um, yeah. So because they are the most heavily talked about, um, people tend to think of them first with regard to these plans and they are good. There's no, um, there's no question about it, but um, they won't, they won't tell me what they offer um that well care doesn't unless i sign up with them and it just i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't justify it yeah so i went I guess... with i went with the least expensive price tag and so far i've been very satisfied yeah i guess i'm just gonna have I, i'll get the booklet and sit down and read it right now i have harvard pilgrim and yep. I've had excellent luck with Harvard Pilgrim. I've had them in the past at different times too. And I've always had good luck with them. Um, so I'm curious what they have, you know, what they offer. Uh, let's see where they are. Do they do, here we go. So they do offer, um, and they were not the most expensive. Uh, they were not the cheapest, but they were my second choice last year. Okay. Um, Harvard Pilgrim also does offer a Medicare Advantage plan. It's called yeah. Stride Right. Okay. So um, if you're if you like the company themselves, um, that may be something that you want to investigate as well. But again, <clears throat> when you think about Medicare Advantage in Original Medicare, just remember there are pros and cons to both of them. And which right. set which set of pros do you like the best, and which set of cons do you like the least? And that's how you can make that determination. So do do Medicare? Or, I mean, probably most hospitals in the Medicare is associated with. I mean, yes. So so for instance, I. I had breast cancer five years ago. Yes. And I continue my follow ups. I went to the um, breast care center in Concord. Okay. And so they would be, they would probably accept Medicare. I mean, yes. I, are they part of Concord Hospital? Yes, they are. Yes. yes. Con uh, Concord Hospital is a Medicare um, uh, facility, they accept okay. Medicare okay. assignment. Mm -hmm. That's that's another concern I have. I want to be able to keep my to keep my the doctors that I have now. You know what I mean? I mean, and I, I don't want to have. To I couldn't switch. tell you for sure that the Stride Right program behaves like the current policy that you have. That's another thing. Don't assume that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's one thing. I, I mean, I need to talk talk to somebody, I guess, and make sure that okay, I can still go down there and get my follow, you know, get my follow up care like I have been doing. But I want to make sure that it's going to be covered, you know. With original Medicare, yes. Yes. Your 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 the question will come in only if you choose to go the route of a Medicare Advantage plan. Then that becomes right. slightly different. Right. Well, I, I, I don't turn 65 till March, so I'm starting this early enough so I have a little time, hopefully, to do some more homework. You're a very wise consumer. Um, 
Trust me, I have no regrets for having started early, and I would heartily recommend it to anybody. So yeah, uh, I, kudos to you for doing so. But do go online and get those two logons. Yeah, I'm going to do that tomorrow, definitely, because I did get one from, I don't know where I got it from, but um, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But those other two look a lot more um, comprehensive than the one that I got. So Okay. Lou and Mary, any questions from additional questions from you for ladies? Oh, you uh, got on unmute. Okay. There we I, go. I it frightened me when I heard Marsha say she didn't know whether she would take uh, Medicare D. Uh, Lou has uh, when she, Medicare D came in, she was already on regular Medicare. And she had no medications, very healthy, and cho didn't realize she should have taken it. And when finally, 10 years later, decided to take it, she now pays a good $30 extra every month a penalty. for a penalty, almost as much as the basic premium for Medicare D. I guess originally they had hoped that Obamacare would be able to do something there, not have it forever but it's forever. Yep. So it, it is far cheaper in a sense to pay it from the beginning than to otherwise you're stuck for life with a penalty. Ask Lou. Yep. <laughs> and Medicare uh, Part D premiums are not high, oddly enough. I expected mine would be skyrocketed and I pay $16.16 a month. Wow. You pay what? 16. 16. I thought it would be a lot more than that. Oh my gosh, she pays oh a good God. 60 to 70. Whoa. Yep. 70, I don't know why, but that's been the problem is Medicare D was our chief reason for wanting to listen because yep. knowing, but we never thought in terms of changing the basic one. Mine, I don't choose because it's through the county. But Luz has had United Healthcare for years and years yep. for A and B. Yep. I never thought of changing that. Medicare D depends on that formulary, which can change. She had had Humana, and all of a sudden Humana took the med off its formulary the last year. And it, we really had a rough couple of months. But the doctors, nurses, and things can be uh, very helpful in writing the reasons for the medications and stuff. But You've got to be careful. Oh. Um, make good with your pharmacist. Um, have them become your best friend. Get to know them on a first name basis um, because they can also be very um, helpful oh. to you. Well, that's you interesting. Know, on, the Medicare, on the Medicare D, do you have a copay on your prescriptions? Or some of, how does some that work? Depends some on the them. tier, yeah. the same as yep. Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay, but not all of them. And as I, as I yeah. said, some of them are free, end up being free. Right. But even as a tier, well, that's, two, my, that's the way my Harvard Pilgrim is now. Some of my medications I pay nothing for. Some yeah. I pay yeah. ten dollars, you know, ten dollars a month or whatever. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yes, and that that is due to the tier system that yeah. Mary was yeah. talking yeah. about. Right. Yes. As this medication, even with tier reduction, we now can get a three month supply for, uh, I believe it's $30 yes. after the beginning. Yes. But she had to go through the deductible because it was not a tier one. They really do a lot, there's an awful lot on those tiers. Yep. Right. Other questions? Um, again, <clears throat> utilize service link, mm -hmm. utilize your websites, mm -hmm. utilize your pharmacist for help with the, specifically the drugs. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, Social Security if you're new signing up. Okay. Okay. Yep. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for joining, Thank folks. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Take care. All righty.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.